ready but when one, you are. One of the things that was you know, first this week was that the, you know, you, we've all talked about the Chang E-4 spacecraft. That That's right. That landed on the... Uh, Far dark, side of the moon. I was going to say Another dark side of the moon. Pink so- no. pink, yeah. <laughs> Another Pink Floyd I reference. I think I see a theme coming on. Do you? <laughs> well, in this case, this craft is not just rolling around on the dark side, but it is on the far side. The other side. It is actually growing things. Right. There you go, setting a new record. That's two records in two weeks with That's the right. Chang'e 4. Seeds carried by the Chang'e 4 lunar lander have sprouted, and this is the first instance of biological matter actually growing on the moon. Right. Potatoes and, and rape seed, right? No, and the, no the, the, those are the ones <coughs> that are also, but the, the winner of the race to sprout on the What's moon is cotton seed. What's the first seeds? To, cotton seed. That's right, cotton yeah. seeds. <laughs> Sprouting in a sealed container. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah. She's cotton. Cherry, yeah. I yeah. know. What are they going to do? They Is it a said, fine cotton? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> and what are they going to do with cotton on the moon? Right? Grow They're going to knit. You know, yeah. little sweaters. Oh, that's right. They it's cold on the dark side of the time moon. on their hands. Yeah. <laughs> it's humankind's first biological experiment on the moon, provided by Professor Li Hanlong of Qingqing University. <laughs> who led the research, he said that the rapeseed and potato seeds had also germinated, but the cotton seeds were the first. Mm-hmm. So they actually have three different types of germinations. Now. Right. In yeah. sealed containers. I love what this foretells about the future of agriculture in space, because uh, I was very influenced by a movie called Silent Running. Oh, uh, yes. And that was probably the beginning of my fascination with space. And that was literally a movie about little robots running a enclosed garden. It was like a, a, a dome garden yeah, a dome floating garden. in in, uh, in deep space. Mm-hmm. Right, right. That, that influenced Dr. Damer, too. Really yeah. Interested in space. Well, it's a real tearjerker movie. So <laughs> it makes you very you humble one? about our aspirations yeah. for the future of the planet. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, we actually have uh, germinated stuff on the space station, you know. I mean, it's it's uh, we have done stuff in space. We That's have true. Zinnias and leaf vegetables. Right, they've been growing some salads up there, but nothing yeah. on the moon. That's right. That's right. So, although this could pl- uh, pave the way for more bio life, um, and uh, you know, they do think that potatoes could be the main source of food for space explorers. Everybody knows that. Matt Damon made that the really potatoes, obvious. Right. That that's, that's how terrible. we're all going to survive. and one uses for a potato. <laughs> it's like bungee cords. That's right. <laughs> and it's a recycled food, right? It goes yeah. in one end, comes out the other as fertilizer for the next round of potatoes, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about the cotton then? Too, that clothing, right? Clothing. I am curious how cotton is going to help us with our spacesuits. We'll have to do something else with it. Yeah, well, I guess you'll... Maybe ha- we'll make some ropes. Uh, cotton ropes? Yeah. Well, I, I th- they say clothing. I said the Chinese talk about clothing. And they say the rapeseed is oil. Right. Yes. Yeah. Can grow some oil. Yeah, so... Also, they had a, a news, a big news uh, event today announcing their um, space exploration ambitions like uh, the Chinese are hoping to send a spacecraft to Mars n- next year okay. All right. so you know American American and European domination of the race for Mars space is, is, uh, is growing that's right well so it's so ironic that people act like it's constantly a, a competition and yet, as soon as you want access to the information, all of a sudden we're all colleagues in science. So, which is it? <laughs> yeah, I think I think once you're up there, mm. actually up there, that the lines are kind of blurred between there, boundaries. There you go. Yeah. We're all in this together. Yeah, exactly. We're from the blue marble planet over there. But in actuality, it's our machines that are up there, and we're down here analyzing the data. Um, it's, you know, it seems like we're there. Because you know, when you put on the goggles for the lunar rover or whatever, it feels like you're cruising around on the moon. Thus, the popularity of virtual reality on the rise. Yeah. I mean, I do think it'll probably um, get easier as time goes on. As yeah, especially because we have all these data points, you know, all throughout the Earth where they can just literally pinpoint everything that's happening, all movement and, you know, Yeah, everything. the GPS, yeah, they're... Yeah. 
NASA is putting in place a GPS for the entire solar system. Oh. As well, a solar system GPS. So. Yeah. That's GPS does not does stand that for work? global, yeah, global positioning that work? satellites. <laughs> right. How's that work, well, Doctor Future? Solar positioning satellites. Uh, you know, we're going to have to wonder about oh. that while we go to a break because <laughs> time is flying, and right. so are we. We'll be right Doctor back. Future show.